wherever he leads you to, whether you know you don't know, whether you're yeah. confused, you're sure yeah, right. that he knows how to guide you, yeah. Yeah. you know, and resting on that. Because I think so many times we are kind of judging the lack of fruit too soon. Yes. That's right. And so we're saying that, God, there's no fruit in this decision, but the time for fruit has not come. My question is, how does God speak to you? Are you a knower, a seer, a feeler, or a visionary? And have you ever had a dream that got delayed and now you're realizing it was the grace of God, it was actually supernatural? Now that makes me think about my journey into ministry because I was in business at the time and, and I'm still in business, but then the Lord told me to walk <laughs> away from it. And I was in real estate and he was just like, walk away from everything, you know? And I was just like, what do you mean? Like, I love this. Mm. So I think it was a mixture of knowing, hearing, seeing, because mm -hmm. I dream a lot yes. as well. And so in that moment, he was telling me, he, like, because I, I entered a place where I just didn't feel at peace with myself. Yeah. I felt like, God, who you created me to be, I'm not being, I'm mm -hmm. not that person mm -hmm. right now. So I went on a journey of, I was in prayer, I was in fasting, and I'm like, God, something is off. And the response from that was, walk away from everything yeah. and move. And I almost wow. felt like, is the mistake asking you, what should yeah. I do? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, so I moved to downtown LA and I'm like, I don't understand what I'm doing. And I come from a Nigerian background and they're very big on, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> yeah. Are you working? Are you, <laughs> you know, so it's very big on being stable, established. I remember when I told my mom, I don't, I, I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. And she was like, I need to pray for my daughter. I think she's <laughs> losing her mind. And so in downtown LA, eventually the Lord led me to the church. So the church that I'm the executive pastor now. And so when he led me there, so I remember walking in and he said, this is where I would raise you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, and then in a dream, he tells me to serve as an usher. And the first year, that's all I should do, serve as an usher. Mm. And I'm like, you want me to do what? <laughs> this is what I left. <laughs> and my mom, we didn't talk for like three months. Yes. My brothers were just like, are you losing it? Because my mom was like, Stephanie, if you want to serve in the house of God, come to Nigeria. Yes. You know, you, yeah. people need God, you know, right. so, and you could work. <laughs> if there's no work for you to do out there, you could work here and serve God all you want. <laughs> And I was like, no, but this is the instruction that the Lord has given me. And so during that course, and I'm in a place I didn't know anyone there. And so during that whole course of one year, what God was really doing was prepare a shepherd's heart. Yeah. And so it was serving with people. It was loving on people, yep. taking on the yeah. burdens of people. Because as an usher, you're walking up, you're meeting people, yeah. you're yeah. greeting yeah. them, yeah. you're hearing what's going on. So I didn't realize that that was what was being cultivated. But that was very hard for me. I was living off my savings. I had very hard moments. I had yes. moments where I questioned God a lot. And just like you're saying, there are moments where I'm like, I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm yeah. not. And then I will have a dream. <laughs> yeah. And the Lord yeah. will come to me and he mm -hmm. says, if you stay, yeah. what I said will be perfected. Wow. And so it was not easy, but there were those yeah. handprints of God all around it because even when I would have a hard moment, it was a hard moment in his hands, Yeah, yeah. you know? And yeah. so I do believe that even when we get into that place of not knowing, oh God, did I make a mistake? The biggest thing you can do is to live surrendered. Because yes. when you live surrendered to Christ, mm -hmm. he knows how to yes. redirect you if needed, not you redirecting yeah. yourself. If needed, he would redirect you. Yeah. And I started learning that even sometimes what we call mistakes is really just labor pains. Yeah. That God, you're birthing me through that. all of this that I feel like, did I get this wrong? That, you know, disappointment, yeah. all of it is labor pains. Yeah. And so when that year was wrapped up and going into, you know, just wondering, so and you told me to write a book, I wrote the book, my pastor read the book, it was a whole story. And then I became, but what's interesting, before I became a pastor, the Lord told me when I would preach, and that's when I gave my message. Um, I remember in a dream, I was being anointed to be um, the campus pastor, and then it was revealed. Then a year later, I was being anointed again to be the executive pastor before it happened. And so I saw how God was literally telling me, I have been with you all yeah. along. Yes. And so what I learned from that was not about the place, but it was yeah. about the hand of God that knows yeah. how to direct you. Right. Yeah. And wherever he leads you to, whether you know you don't know, whether you're yeah. confused, you're sure yeah, right. that he knows how to guide you, yeah. you know, and resting mm -hmm. on that. Because I think so many times we are 
kind of judging the lack of fruit too soon. Yes. That's right. And so we're saying that, God, there's no fruit in this decision, but the time for fruit has not come. That's yes. right. And so we use that Very to say, good. oh my gosh, like I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. No, if I'm in God's hands, I'd rather make a mistake in his hands yes. Yes. rather than making it in my pride or yeah. in my ego. If yeah. I'm making it because I said I was going to do this to glorify the name of God, he is God enough to know how to use that yeah. to still deliver on his word. Yeah. So. You just made me um, <laughs> reflect on something. Um, so the question of do you you know see, feel, hear? I hear mm -hmm. the voice of God. And it's interesting because, so the role I'm in now, I lead faith partnerships at Facebook. Everybody thinks Facebook is a godless place. <laughs> but... Nope. I'm yeah. there and the Lord is with me. So, um, but before Facebook, I never worked in social technology at all. I loved what I was doing. I was helping lead a, a network of alternative schools for girls. And I was in prayer. April of 2017, I was in prayer and I was asking God for clarity on what I need to do next in that role. And the Lord said, this assignment is over. Like I, I heard it so clearly. Yeah. And the CEO had came to me like a couple weeks before and was like, we're doing my succession plan. I want to put you down as my successor. Just want to make you aware of that. I was like, all right. <laughs> and for me, I felt like that was my assignment yes. because, you know, my background, where I came from, I saw yeah. myself in these girls and I thought I would do that for the rest of my life. But I know I heard the voice of God and I know the voice of God. And so I told my husband and I said, babe, God just told me to resign from, from my job. And he was like, are the bills resigning too? Because yeah. <laughs> uh, you can't just walk off your job. But uh, I knew what God said. So um, I prayed again. I said, Lord, you know, what do you want me to do next? And he told me to resign at the end of the fiscal year. Yeah. June 30th, 2017. Friday, June 30th, 2017. Wow. Gave me that day. So I sit down with my boss and I give her my letter of resignation. And she's like, well, what are you going to do next? Um, and I'm like, I'm going to tell you soon. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, Lord, what am I going to do next? Right? <laughs> and so we finished talking at 140. I get in my car and I'm driving home. And like the weight of it is now settling on yeah, me. Because yeah. I'm like, I just quit my job. And so I'm like, Jesus, what are we doing? Yeah. 2.05, 25 minutes later, my cell phone rings, and it's a 650 area code. It just said San Francisco, California. I didn't know anybody. I wasn't going to answer it. thought I was a telemarketer. And the spirit said, take that call. Yeah. And so I was like, all right. So I picked it up, and uh, this woman was like, hi, is this Nona Jones? And I said, yes. And she said, hi, I'm calling from Facebook. And I said, well, Facebook doesn't call people, so who right. is this? <laughs> Playing games on my phone. And uh, she proceeded to tell me that the week before, Mark changed the mission of the whole company to focus on community building. And she said that the largest community in the world that was the most meaningful to the people who were in it was the faith community. Wow. And that my name had been mentioned in a meeting wow. as someone that they should talk to about the work. And I was just like, all right, Lord. So you knew wow. Wow. months yeah. ago wow. that if I walked in faith, because see, here's the thing. Here's the key. When you talk about identity and assignment, my identity was so wrapped up in what I was doing that if they would have called me and I had not resigned, right. yeah. I wouldn't have left. Right. Wow. That's right. I wouldn't have that's left amazing. because I loved what I was doing yeah. and I felt like that's what I was wow. called to do. And so God was like, I'm calling you away to a land that you know nothing of. You've never even yeah. seen yeah. it. Wow. You've never stepped foot in it. You're going to question why you're there, oh, but wow. I've called you to it. This and so I'm just, I'm so grateful. As I listen to your stories, it's encouraging yes. me yeah. that a lot of times God will call you away from the very yes. thing that was your identity yes. Yes. so he can get you to walk in your assignment. Yes. Come and on. that's what we're doing. Yes. So true. Wow. Yeah. And sometimes I think, especially if we are strong women, we sometimes yes. feel like we want to make it happen and then we'll give it to God. Like, right. look what I did for you. Yeah, rather than, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I might be an adult and I might have been an adult for a while, but I don't know what's next. Yeah. And I just think of so many people right now in my own personal life that are in all seasons of life that have killed the Goliaths in their life, but now they're sitting there going, what's next? Yeah. And so I wanna pray for you if yeah. you're watching and let's pray today for those women and that are watching, men and women that are like, I just need to know. Yeah. So Holy Spirit, yes. I thank you that you knew they were supposed to watch this today. Yes. I thank you that they have tuned in to this very moment and there's something within them that's saying, yes, I need to believe for the next. I need to see the next. And I, I just want to remind them first that the Holy Spirit, you live within them and you are leading them and guiding them and comforting them. And I ask right now that we would, as women, surrender yeah. to the leading of your Holy Spirit. And I ask where there is no courage, 
you would help them to be courageous. Where there is fear, you would give them faith, God. Wherever they might feel depleted and bankrupt, whether it be financially, emotionally, mentally, even relationally, I ask Holy Spirit that they would see that they are not this moment, that there is so much more ahead of them. And I pray right now for a divine intervention, like right now, right where they are, that if their marriage is over, I pray that you would revive their marriage. If their finances are at the darkest place, I ask God that you would give them clarity on what to do to generate and to, to see revenue like they haven't seen. And for those that are maybe have had lost loved ones in this season and, and they're, they're feeling discouraged and, and sad and in grief, I pray you would revive them and let them know that you didn't bring them out of Egypt to, to let them die in the desert, but you're, they're, they're gonna carry on and there is still a great promise. So revive our hearts today, encourage us, do what only you can do, God, speak to the deepest of who we are and remind us of who we are in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.